Right now, because of IRS underfunding, the super rich are 80% less likely to be audited than the very poor. For every dollar that goes to the IRS, we get $4 back in revenue from taxpayers, and most of that would be coming from wealthy people because it turns out wealthy people are the ones who actually are not paying what they owe. It's absurd. IRS enforcement is a huge deal. A lot of people don't pay attention to it. They assume, like any other law, that if there is a tax law on the books, that's the end of it. But if a law is on the books and it's not enforced, you might as well not have a law. And that's exactly what's happened to the IRS over the years. The IRS doesn't have the resources to audit the wealthy. There's a lot of legal tax evasion going on. The wealthy have managed to get loopholes in the tax laws, like the famous carried interest loophole that allows a lot of financial partnerships to be taxed at the lower capital gains rate than regular income. But it's not just legal loopholes. The wealthy often take illegal steps to shelter their income. Legally, they owe the money. They should be paying the money, but they don't. They figure it's going to be too hard to audit them. For example, one who was president of the United States, who has had an audit going on for years. I'm being audited. Being audited. We're under audit. Every year they audit me, audit me, audit me. The burden of paying for the government moves on to the middle class, the working class, and the poor. The actual budget for the IRS has shrunk dramatically for having inspectors, for having auditors. The last time the IRS had fewer than 10,000 agents who were out there doing the work was 1953, when the economy was one-seventh the size it is right now. Newt Gingrich in 1995 said, the IRS is your enemy. I hereby end 40 years of democratic rule of this house. Well, nobody likes to pay taxes, but the IRS was made into the scapegoat for every problem everybody had. Now, the irony here is that it's the Republicans and some Democrats whose campaigns have been backstopped by the very wealthy who have pushed back against IRS enforcement. They're not even willing to give the IRS the money to enforce the law. It allows them to say, well, we told you the IRS is inefficient. It's incompetent. There's a cycle at work here. If you defund the IRS, there are fewer people there to answer the telephone. In other words, the whole institution becomes less efficient, less responsive, and the worst aspect of it is that it means fewer dollars coming in to finance everything else that the public needs to have done. These are all, as you can see, very bipartisan projects. The only debate was how this is going to be paid for. Again, every dollar going to the IRS means $4 back. It would help pay for the infrastructure bill, but Republicans don't want to do it because they don't want their wealthy patrons to have to pay taxes. It comes down to that. If you defund the IRS, you are essentially defunding the government. And if you're defunding the government, you're actually hurting a lot of people. So you need an IRS that has enough resources that can actually find where the wealthy have hidden the wealth that's supposed to be taxed.